So this guy, you know, got up the nerve, high school kid, asked a girl to the date. She shockingly said yes, all excited. He picks her up, you know, they get there, but there's this long line to get in. So, but it's okay, you know, he's really happy, she's happy, they're having a good time, they look great. Um, once they get in, she had to go to the bathroom. And of course, it's the woman's bathroom, so there's a long line, so he has to stand there and wait for that line. And then, you know, they have that photo, you know, backdrop with the theme of the prom, and they want to take their picture with that. And there's a really long line for that that they're standing there. And he asks, are you thirsty? She goes, yeah. So he walked over and he was so happy because there was no punchline. Aren't you going to finish the joke? <laughs> I'm Jacques. I'm Joe. And this is Carnival Personnel. Oh. In about five minutes when All-Star Tommy's walking, he's going to be like, oh, no punchline. Okay. <laughs> I see what he's done there. Um Big week, big, big week, Joe. Let's get right to the fun stuff. Are you ready for two hours of this? <laughs> I don't think I am. Uh, let's let's get the good stuff right out of the way. This chip? Harry Anderson. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. God bless Harry Anderson. He's one of those guys where you forgot about, kind of, because not because he was unimportant. It's just that he wasn't around. He wasn't active. He would, like, if you, if you saw him do things, you would probably end up watching him. Right. Um... But yeah, Harry Anderson played Judge Harold, the Honorable Judge Harold T. Stone on TV's Night Court from 1984 to 1990, 91, or maybe 92. Um, great run. You know, one of those weird shows that, uh, you know, it it was in the must-see TV kind of lineup in the 80s. It followed Cheers and all of that. But it was, as the AV Club put it, the black sheep of the NBC lineup of comedy back in the 80s because it didn't follow that sort of, you know, it wasn't like smart comedy. It was pie-in-the-face humor. It was slapstick. Right. It was absurd. And then towards the end, it was just, yeah, it was just off-the-wall stuff. Uh, it was, I mean, it was off-the-wall throughout. Um, and um, But, yeah, it, it was a, a, one of those shows that hit me and probably Jim and I know definitely Jim, um, our friend Jim, it hit us right in the bullseye as far as we were like, you know, 10, 11, 12, maybe even younger when it was first on network television. But when it started getting on reruns is when we started watching them on Channel 56 in Boston. Uh, that show was perfect for us because it was an adult show. It had, had adult jokes. It wasn't dirty, though. It was kind of dirty. But you had to read between the lines. You had to kind of be a little knowledgeable you had to be at least 12 or 13 to get those jokes but it also had like that slapstick that or a summerfield 12 is like I yeah <laughs> <laughs> but and um of course marky post you know for a heteronormative man like myself uh i'm, I'm sorry heteronormative 12 year old boy <laughs> like myself back then easy on the eyes but um, but we're not talking about Marky Post or uh, John Larroquette, who played the um, Dan Emmy, Fielding Emmy Award winning three times. He won the award for uh, and, and Dan. you broke down the greatest skit of all time. You know the scene where uh, oh, when he and he, he, he saves a, right, yeah, where Harry where Harry busts in and saves, uh, or it's a long story, but yeah, there there's a scene there that. Um, is funny, and I'm not going to go into it now because that would bore you, and I'm not doing it justice. But uh, Harry Anderson, I remember him as much from Cheers because of the age difference between us. I remember him as being the the guy on Cheers, Harry the Hat, and he was great. He I, was really, really fun on that. I didn't. That flew under my radar, and I'm not a big Cheers guy, so I, mean, I like Cheers. It's just like I'd never, I haven't, yet, I've yet to binge watch Cheers, and I didn't watch a lot of it growing up. Um, but I went online after Harry Anderson died, and you know that's the thing that Americans do or people do. Right. You know, like if he had an album, it would be number one right now. I'm sure if Night Court were like you know on sale somewhere, like those would be through the roof. Um, but I started watching those clips of him as Harry the Hat, and him just being a grifter, and it was like these little vignettes, these little like segments that he would just come in, do his little magic and or shell game thing, and then be off. And then I actually did watch his 1985 Showtime special. Uh, Harry Anderson, Hello Sucker, which is pretty decent. You know, John Larroquette makes a cameo appearance in there. But, you know, it's him doing adult humor. He says the F word. You know, it's like, oh, cool. You know, Judge T. Stone is saying fuck. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as his death goes, 
um, as of the recording of this podcast, he's been dead for a f- several days, and I don't know if there is a cause of death yet. Maybe there is, and I just haven't read about it. But he was found in his North Carolina home by police. You know, there's probably obviously some sort of wellness check, and um, I don't know. I'm sure it was like a heart attack. He was 65. Which is, honestly, you know, <laughs> it's relatively young by today's standards. Absolutely, absolutely. You, you know. Re- relatively young. Um you know, um, what was I going to say? His, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, speaking of watching stuff of his online, the last thing I did see him host was a thing on uh, Mark Cuban's Access TV called Gotham Night, uh, it was Gotham Comedy Club. The Gotham Comedy Series, yeah. Yeah, and he hosted one of those not too long ago. Um, and he told his story about how he once hosted Saturday Night Live one time. This was during the Dick Ebersol years. And I think the opening sketch or like one of his earlier sketches was an illusion of him holding a hamster and then eating it. <laughs> which he, you know, he had swapped out for like a sponge cake that looked like a hamster, but then like immediately apparently the like the the switchboards lit up. Oh. Uh and then he they they asked him, you know, he called the he called the uh the he called the um the to say it, Joe, he called the hamster Skippy. Um and then he ate this hamster. The phones light lit up, and they pull him aside. It's like you know, you really should not be going on like later on and just explaining that no, you didn't really eat a hamster because we're getting a lot of feedback right now that there people are worried that you actually ate a real hamster. So he goes on and he goes, um, so I wanted. I've been told that people are worried that I ate a hamster, and I just wanted to reassure everybody. That pound for pound, nothing tastes better than Skippy. <laughs> Which is <laughs> right. that, that, that's uh that's um it's a it, it's a awfulsome. Uh, yeah, it's awfulsome. Anyways, we are kind of meandering here as no, I but that's okay. Do. But what uh the other the other passing and uh is th- this week is, you know, um one of only two people in the history of the United States to be first lady. And first mother of a president, Barbara Bush died. There's only one other time, so she, you know, she's second, yeah. uh, second person. In well, the John history. Adams, wife, right? Abigail Adams, right? And so, uh, and look, you know, I mean, she, she, she had that, 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 like, you know, twelve year run at the White House, the eight years with, with uh, Uncle Ronnie. Not, not like the biggest. I have nothing against her, you know. I mean, but both Bushes, you know. I mean, you know, W. You can't say that, you know, he didn't commit genocide against the 03, you know, the false. I'm not going down that thing, but focusing on her. I mean, she was a very public figure. My favorite story about her was, I guess, one time um, she was at the Oval Office when her son was there for something, and he's, and he's reading something. He puts his feet on the coffee table, and she hit his feet and said, get your feet off the coffee table. And I guess the Secret Service said, said ma'am, he can do that. He's a president. And she goes, no, he's my son, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, which, which, if that story happened or not, I don't know. Um, what's interesting, and I'll just gloss over it, is it uh, Flotus, I guess, is at the service, but Blotus isn't. Of course. Um, and, he, and, you know, citing that, oh, the security and, and the logistics of it would take away from the moment he doesn't want to be a distraction. Wow. The the, the budget that the, um, the GAO has allowed for bullshit in this administration <laughs> is through the roof. Right. You know, maybe he doesn't want to be there with, like, Hillary and Bill that he can't stop calling names, or Obama or Michelle. I mean, because all or Jeb or Jeb, you know, like, or George. I mean, he's, he, you know, he he did not have kind words to say about Jeb or, or W. You know, he's he slammed his administration, you know, quite a bit. He's, you know, he's thrown him under the bus with the wars itself, saying he should have never done that, saying he should have taken care of Kim Jong Un years, all this stuff. So, so, so uh, um. Funerals are kind of a drag, <laughs> right. a little boring. Well, they're not about him. Did it fall on a Saturday or a Sunday? Where he's going to uh, go. Around. Yeah. So, anyways, but but uh, former first lady and first mom uh, Barbara Bush. Did she? There, I think there is photographic evidence of her looking hot at some point. I'm sorry to be so chauvinistic. Well, think about. It. I mean, they were married 73 years, so wow. they got married. Yeah, they got married. It's married, when they were like by the way, 1920. They like, were married 73 years. Married 73. They had years. known each other prior to that, like, right? The high know. school sweetheart yeah. type of thing. I mean, yeah, and then it was. It was one of those things. It's like just. I think it's either just before he. Yeah, I think when 
uh, George Bush Sr. went to war. It was one of those, he's going off to war, let's, you know... Make an honest woman of her. Right before he gets on the, the you know. And again, I mean, he's one of those he's one of those presidents with a a, a true decorated war record. Uh, I think he was the youngest pilot in World War II, like the youngest combat pilot wow. in World War II, you know, George Bush Sr. And she was married to him. 73, 73, only felt like 73 minutes underwater <laughs> but uh but so 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 that's happy you know that's happy. you know who's you know who else is dead but it's his birthday let's give a big carnival personnel shout out happy birthday to adolf hitler by the way we should preface that we're we're recording this podcast on oh. 420 man you want spark one up for the new you you want to ruin some stoners uh big holiday remind them oh 420 that's hitler's birthday <laughs> <laughs> so a big shout Shout out to our favorite non-smoking, vegetarian, you-killing dictator. Cigarette mind fuhrer? <laughs> Nine! Be like Hitler. Don't smoke. Um, Paid for by the National <laughs> Cigarette Society no, or whatever. So, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this to segue into getting a little off topic, I know. Um, and I, I'm going to have, maybe it's a weekly thing. Hey, what the fuck, Germany? So, Joe, I know you study all types of brothels around the world. You've read my thesis, <laughs> haven't you? Have you seen, like, the, the, I read it and I saw it on the Huffington Post and then I went and, and looked at a couple other places. I'm like, is this a rib? Is this one of the guys in the office? Um, and I mean this, a full service sex doll brothel in Germany with those you know, several thousand dollar, like, and they say, oh, lifelike. It's like, it still looks like a mannequin with lipstick. Dead people are lifelike. <laughs> right. You know, it's like, oh, that looks so lifelike if it were alive. And, 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 I, and I joke, I kid you not, they, they have like, I want to say it's 10 or 12 of these women and then one male doll, or as I like to call them, male prostitute, Frank Arben. Frank Arben, male prostitute. Um, and they, they are booked. Each one is booked an average of 12 times a day, 12 one-hour sessions a day, you know, seven days a week at, you know, I don't know what the conversion is, but it's like 101 euros. Um, she works hard for the money. <laughs> do, 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 do. I mean, and, and, and we've talked about this. It's like 95% of like mass shootings are done by men. Are there women out there? And I'm thinking that the one male sex doll is for, you know, dudes. Like, I, is that something like, you know, now that a woman would walk into a male brothel and like, yes, I want to go fuck that mannequin. Or is it just guys who will just put the penis in anything? Yeah, I think so. That's why there's only one. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they're not picky. It's just sort of like, <laughs> right. I don't know, man. But this is the first one, and it's like, and now they're going to be expanding. And it's like, no, friends bit, but I thought, like, that'd be something you'd hear about in Japan. But, you know. By the way, great workaround. You know, it's just like prostitution illegal. No problem. No problem. Yeah, we're not exploiting people. We're ex we're we're enterprising young exploiting, men. Exploiting like I don't even know what they're horny made of, dudes. But, yeah, but but yeah, they have all these pictures in their post, and it looks like a it looks like a a really creepy low end wax museum type thing. And it's like, yeah, and they're like, oh well, they they have like a, a seventy five percent recidivism rate, but most people come in as a curiosity. It's like I would walk by that, look at that, and think, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, people? right. I'm not judgy. I'm into some weird shit. I'll put that out there. But come on. All right. Well, we'll we'll tune in a, tune in, in a year when VR porn becomes a thing. And then, yeah, we'll see how picky you are. Question. Do you think we're doing this if VR porn is a thing? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's Star Trek. It, like, remember in The Next Generation, that hollow deck? Yeah. You think I would ever leave that? <laughs> I, I mean, it's been six days. Where's Commander Shock? Uh, he died of dehydration. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there such a power surge in this one room? <laughs> we can't hit warp speed because of so much energy going to this one particular room for so long. And hey, and, and, and while, you know, while we're giving a big shout out to uh, my Fuhrer on his birthday, what? Whoa, boy. <laughs> you know, you thanked Hitler. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would not. never. I would never. Why are they booing me? Mm. Mm, I don't know. Maybe it's because you thanked Hitler. Uh, but but staying on that happy track, remember a few weeks ago I pointed out that there was uh, uh, 
a Democrat, like DC based, um, like a, a politician who was saying all the storms were caused by the Jews, that the Jews control the weather. Uh-huh. He wanted to get ahead of the curve. He wanted to mend some fences. Truly, he he took his entire staff and they went on a tour of the Holocaust Museum. And it's not just Blotus who can make a bad situation worse. Uh, and, and, and the dude's name is Trayvon White. Uh, he's a representative f- from D.C., is it Trey Bon White, really? It, oh, yeah. It's uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, or Trey, Trey oh, I'm sorry, Trayson, T R A Y S O N, Trayson White. Uh, so he takes his staff, and I think there was 14 of them, and they get a private tour. Um, oh, Trayon White. Trayon, is that how you pronounce it? Am I saying it wrong? Okay, sorry. Yep. Either way, he uh, he misunderstood some of the captions of the photos, like, um. And, and ask some questions that you want to think you would need to ask in, like, a Holocaust museum. But at one part of the tour, about halfway through, uh, somebody turned around to say something to him and noticed he was missing. And he didn't tell his staff uh, whatever happened, happened, and he just left halfway through the tour. Didn't he excuse himself, didn't say bye. Uh, wow. You know, may- maybe he, you know, maybe he just went to... Uh, I don't know, to check on what the Jews would do with the weather outside while they were conning into this. Uh, I swear to God, I haven't really been following this story. Shocked. White, uh, not a not a black guy. I mean, not a white guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a black, ooh, yeah, black yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Black guy named White. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I know that's common. I just didn't realize. I heard anti-Semitic. I figured, you know, gotta be. Right. And, uh, hey, at least he's a Democrat. You know, all oh, right. He's representing. <laughs> you know, so like I said the last time, we pointed out that you know when he went on his Jews control the weather thing, which hey, I one hundred percent believe. I just want to find out where the money train is. It's like the underwear gnomes. Get the underwear. Part one. Step two. Question mark equals money. Who do you think runs Big Umbrella? <laughs> So, so it's just great that you know he found a way to hit rock bottom and keep digging. So, so I, I figure you know tie that into you know my Fuhrer's birthday. Please stop saying that. Okay, I will. How about how about talking about something even uh, happier, a little closer to home? So let's 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 review uh, Ted Cruz's relationship with the guy at sixteen hundred Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, can't ne- always refers to him as lying Ted. Um, says that his father um, was part of the Cuban assassination of JFK and went well out of his way to say that his wife is ugly. Um, but – and 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 typical GOP, gosh, I wish we could get our shit together and fall in line, um, wrote a glowing op-ed in, uh, in, uh, in the, the Times – um, the Washington Times? No, no, no. Time Magazine. Like oh, there's, I see. The, the, there's an issue like, you know, the 100 most influential people out right now. And Ted Cruz l- truly put on the knee pads and went to town on Blotus. I'm like, any one of those three things, stand up for your dad, you know, stand up for your wife, or God forbid, man, at least stand up for yourself. You know, I mean, even now he can't not refer to him without calling him lying Ted. But, you know, as soon as one of those guys takes over... They all just fall in line. And it's like, you know, in this week, you know, it's supposed to be the confirmation of Pompeo. And there's a couple holdouts um, like, like you know, Flake in Arizona. So Flake in Arizona has been at, quote, unquote, war with Blotus. And he has really stood up to him. He's not going to run for reelection. So he's really fighting back and he's trying to save the Republican Party. Yada, yada. 95% of the time he votes with them. Like like literally it's it's like it's such a huge thing when just one of them will not vote the party line on one thing. But like, you know, like when John McCain didn't vote to keep Obamacare, he voted to not repeal it based on the fact that it it wasn't being given its its due process and they were trying to steamroll it through. Of course, when they steamrolled the tax bill through, they gutted it. So he he did the same thing, but it's it's such a shock when but seriously, Lion Ted, you know, stand up for yourself or or stand up for your dad or stand up for your wife. But it's not like he had to um you know, if he could have just not said anything, but to go out of your way to say what a great job he is and what a leader. and you know, <laughs> It's like, what did Cinderella say when she got to the ball, Joe? <laughs> 
save that for the opening of the next podcast. What are you doing giving that away? For two pod and two jokes in one podcast? What was was the first one really a joke? That's true. True. <laughs> I, I think a tree fell in the forest and nobody was there. <laughs> Enough said. Uh, but but again, uh we, we all know when you're a lawyer, me uh, who said this? Like one of the late night talk shows said it. And it's an old saying, but it's great. When you're a lawyer needs a lawyer. You really need to get a lawyer. <laughs> and and it looks like Rudy Giuliani is getting back into the law game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I kind of know about this. So what, he's going up to represent Trump in the— Represent. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, he, and he's also out to, like, call for the— um, call for Mueller to drop this whole— uh, Which this whole wish— This whole mishmash with Trump and the— uh, Yeah, the witch hunt. Um, yeah, I know very little about this. I just saw the headline today. So school me. Pretend I'm, you know, paint me like I'm one of your models. So, huh? so, <laughs> <laughs> I want to try you. Right. Uh, so it's been well documented that, you know, left and right, he's been losing lawyers. You know, Dodd a couple weeks ago. And, and then it's like everyone thought that, that Dow backed out because he was offended that you know, his client wasn't listening to him, but now it turned out, he, well, he recused himself or left the legal team because he might have been waiving, uh, uh, what do you call it? Cli- client. Uh, uh, no, no. W- when the president, wa- or, like, absolves you of, of, why am I blanking on the word? Oh, um, pardons, pardons. Pardons. Thank like, you. Like, 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 like that he was going around to Flynn and other people offering him pardons to not flip. Mm. So that's why he kind of got out of Dodge. Then there was just, Story after story, all the big law firms wouldn't take him, and they won't take him because he's an awful client, and they won't take him because he's an awful client who doesn't pay his legal bills. I mean, there's just a 40-year history of of people, the the bigger guns, so all the big silk-stocking law firms, all the big heavy hitters are saying no, no, no. Um and then, of course, you know, Cohen gets arrested last week and all this stuff. So I'm just thinking of the um, the Champion Bank. But like for Giuliani, so it's like when lawyers say no, Rudy says, says yes. <laughs> but and well, here's the funny thing about him saying yes. We talked about this when we started the podcast. You know, he went just before, like just a few days before the WikiLeaks story leaked about like having Hillary's hacked emails and stuff like that. He was on the Today Show talking about. Oh, well, we got a surprise coming up at the end of the week. And they're like, oh, do you want to – it's an October surprise? What is – you'll see. And if you Google what I'm talking about, he was being very – he – and so part of the rumor is, is he under Mueller's investigation for being – because obviously he knew that that was going to be released four or five days before. And he couldn't not keep his mouth shut and was being like a a, a giddy like 12-year-old. I know what you're getting for Christmas. I know know something. I won't tell. I won't tell. I won't tell. (laughs) And so he hasn't been in the legal game for a long time. Uh, he's a fan. Like he's not, you know, you don't want a lawyer who's like your best friend. You, the last thing that he needs as the walls are closing in is another yes man around him. But Hey, God bless you, Rudy. (laughs) My God, sir, you look a lot thinner now that the walls are squishing (laughs) you from both ends. Um, but let's talk about some happy news. Have you followed, uh, Tammy Duckworth in the past like few days? Uh, she's the first U.S. senator to have given birth while in office, and then she brought her daughter to work day kind of deal? Well, there's, Is well, it a daughter or son? It's a daughter, yeah. and it's one of those things where there's laws against, you know— children in, in, in during session uh-huh. in the chambers, like, you know, when votes are taken and stuff like that. And as we know, I mean, there's laws that you have to be in the room when the votes are taken. And, you know, when she was pregnant and stuff like that, there was all these, um, you know, different people like, you know, uh, like Elizabeth Warren, like tweeting out, it's like, I call first holding the baby while she goes and votes and stuff like that. And what's interesting is she's not young. I'm surprised that the hardcore Republican conservatives didn't try to ban her while she was pregnant because we all know that life begins at conception. It really does, doesn't it? You know? <laughs> so that le- technically she had a child in- inside, right? <laughs> I wonder if somebody tried that shit. I <laughs> oh, oh, that'd be so somebody, great. You know, but oh, the, the balls in that person. Well, well, here's the great thing. It's like she's everything that they hate. Uh, a, a woman. B, an immigrant. Um, a Democrat. C, a Democrat. A, a woman. Uh, but she, she's a decorated purple heart 
you know, tested combat pilot. She's lost her legs, you know, in, in, in combat. It's like you can't, as much as you might hate her, she can come out and say any inflammatory thing you want. You can't say anything about her. Like you literally can never show your face at a military thing, you know, if you go and dis, you know, disperge her the same way. You know, they do with others. But uh, but it's funny because, you know, in the last couple of years, you've seen different political figures around the world, like, you know, women who are in the Senate in like Sweden and Norway, truly breastfeeding while votes are being taken and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yet they did. But so they they had these they, they got rid of some archaic laws that said that she can't have the child like with her because she is. Mm -hmm. She's just days old and she has to be there, you know, working and nursing and all this. You stuff, know what? So. You know what law still isn't on the books? What's that? There's nothing on the law books that says an elephant can't pitch. I walked right into the propeller. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's, you know, I mean, we talk a lot about like the crappy part of politics, but it is, it is, uh, it is nice. It, I mean, every time I see a tweet from her, something like, I usually just like, you know, respond like just hero. Yeah. Like, by the way, speaking of, I know it's not on the docket, but speaking of female pilot heroes, what about the woman who piloted yes. the Southwest plane that was uh, tra I mean, uh, tragically killed a, a passenger? But one of the engines blew, and they were running on one engine, um, you know, but she descended to safety. And, you know, I guess if it wasn't, if that one person survived, she would be on par with Sully Sullenberger. Right, right. You know, but no, you know, they should, we unfortunately lost a life in that incident. So, you know, and, and by the way, it wasn't because of those meddling geese <laughs> that the plane <laughs> decided to take a nosedive. Um, yeah, so another combat pilot. Yeah, combat pilot. but, you know, uh, a woman. Yep. So, I mean, it's obviously, it's not like, a woman? What? <laughs> but it's like, okay, w this maybe should be a kind of a bigger deal, or it's or, or should it? You right. know what I mean? That That's the thing. It's like, it's no big deal. Because recently, like, you know, Tammy Duckworth has been, and she said this recently, she's been the first so many things, like the first woman, you know, the first paraplegic to hold a Senate seat, the first, like, you know, a woman to have, and she's like, yeah, this is great, but at the same time, it's 2018. I shouldn't be the first at any of these things. This shouldn't be. So it is amazing what the what the pilot for Southwest did. 100% agreed. Yeah. Um. But it shouldn't be. Wow, a woman did this. It should be a pilot did this. Yep. You know, True. You know, you know. Yeah. So what do you call a woman pilot? <laughs> oh, what do you call a woman who flies a plane? A, a pilot, pilot misogynist. <laughs> God, one of these days I'm going to deliver like a, a, a line off the top of my head that's going to kill, okay. kill, and I don't have to backtrack and delete words and oh, I suck. No, Come hey, on. hey, let's make this about me and how much I suck. <laughs> but enough about you. No, what, enough about me. What do you think of me? Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I can fuck up lines better than See? anybody. I'm catching. Um, so you know, hey, the last thing I want to talk off, you know, talk about uh, Jim Carrey. Like his artwork is like. Um, Awesome. Prolific, too. I mean, it's like, it almost seems like, and it's great, it's like once a week he has this new inflammatory GOP painting. That it is, seems like two or three times a week. Yeah. So I don't know if he's, you know, doing meth and up like 24 <laughs> hours a day doing this stuff, but the stuff is great. Yeah, or if he's just like backlogging caricatures of politicians that he hates, and then when they finally fuck up, it's like, oh, I get to release my, you know... Uh, whatever. Who who who's the latest victim? Was it Michael Cohen? Oh, my, oh yeah, yeah, Michael Cohen, which was which was pretty great. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, no, he's he's fantastic. But then, of course, I think there are people who are just like you know you you know why don't you just talk out of your asshole? Stay in your lane, man. Yeah, right. I mean, the guy. By the way, shut his, up and dribble. His lane is being an artist, right? You know, <laughs> like he was an artist since his whole entire life. It's just now his medium is painting. You know, he does. He's got so much fu money. That he can um, he can just sit and paint. That's kind of what he does now. Like this is his phase of his life. And, and, and he, uh, we, what was that show that we just saw him interviewed on? Uh, what, Jim and Andy. Jim and Andy. Oh, oh no, was it was Jim and Andy or oh, oh um, the Gary Shandling. Gary thing. Shandling. He's gone. Like the Jim and Andy thing. Uh, the one I was thinking of. Where, oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, he's he's dealing with uh, with a different set of rules. We'll just say exactly now. right. Like he's on a different plane, man. No, he's got that fu money, and he's happy to spend it. You know, <laughs> you know? so good for him. Um, I don't even, you know, I forgot to set the timer. I apologize. So That's I don't okay. know. We're at the half hour mark. Okay, so we're right awesome. on time. Um, uh, spoiler free because Joe hasn't seen it yet. La 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 la. Ready la. player one. Uh, Spielberg 
Uh, and, and what's really great about this, and again, this is spoiler free because if you've seen a poster or, you, you, or you've seen a trailer, you know he has found a way to um, basically take every property he's ever laid his hands on, merge it into a movie in a very organic, natural way. And it is nothing but a pop culture um, um Smooze fest, or you know, or, or, or wet of, dream, yeah, wet dream of everything from from like you know comics to music to uh, largely video games, from bikes to trains to video games, <laughs> any old thing you see. <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest Toy Story, is. yeah, but, but the, yeah, it's almost like our. It's kind of like the way we talk. It is, and I think it's a lot of the way that Americans talk now. It's just we we I I exclusively talk to my children in Simpsons quotes. I don't know about you. But that's how we'd converse, you know. But that's we we're so that's so ingratiated in our in our psyche growing up in the seventies, eighties, and nineties. I don't know how, but it's funny because this generation is going to have their own set of rules or a set of references. But we're referencing references, like they're going to be referencing references. They're not going to be quite knowing where the source material is because of. The you know just the, there's well, a huge it's gap the, in that. I uh, okay. we we had a friend over our house this morning and I was talking about Joe's oldest son who's my my little dream squasher's uh, piano teacher, and I remember you know J- Joe's not a Joe's in a big musical background, um, but his son at a very early age started playing keyboards. And, of course, because of Joe's love of Weird Al, he started down the path of playing Weird Al songs. And we always joked about, like, you know, his son doesn't – like, Joe's love of seeing sequels before he sees the original. Like, will his son know that that Fat isn't the original? Like, is he going to hear <laughs> Michael Jackson sometimes and think, oh, this guy's – this guy's doing ripping a off weird out. Ripping off weird out. But then by the time his oldest son, I want to say hit 10, 11, 11, or 12, he started writing parodies of Weird Al parodies. Like it was, <laughs> and I, I was, and it was great. And so, yeah, it's like, okay, it's an exception, you know, a dream within a dream. What is it? And where this takes place in the future. The future, Conan? Thank you. Um, it's funny because there are these kids referencing movies. In like the mid '80s, uh, and, and just obsessed with the mid '80 culture, and it's one of those things. It's like it makes sense why a 16, 17, 17, 18 year old kid would be obsessed with the Back to the Future, or you know, one of the hundred things that they have out there. Because the '80s were fucking awesome. That's why. No argument here. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no. I, I, the '90s were great. What oh, I remember yes. of them, nah. and, and and that there's there's a there's a lot of patchy areas. But as far as the '80s go, 100 percent agree. I think the '90s were the beginning of referencing with the Simpsons. Essentially, was referencing uh, old material and referencing pop culture. Uh, so this is yeah. I guess this is sort of a culmination. It's like maybe it may be a little thin on story, or is it pretty solid? No, it's pre- it, it is, and it's it it has it has a predictable. There's there's lots of elements that are predictable, but then there's stuff that it's like oh okay didn't didn't see that coming. You know, it's like the bad guy. You know he's the bad guy as soon as you see him because I, I don't know the, I'm not great with actors' names because he's the bad guy in everything he's ever done he, he ever type thing but he's perfect for this. Um, but a lot of it takes place in this you know this this game playing world and it's it's fun right and I guess if you don't know it's about a world in which you enter the oasis which is a virtual world it's kind of like the Matrix but it's it's voluntary <laughs> yeah kind I think. And don't spoil it if it isn't voluntary. Well, we were talking about VR earlier. It, it's it's a VR world that everybody is plugged into. Like like this ma- like this overpopulation. According to the trailers, you can well, or or it's a dystopian future. Yeah, you know, f- for the most part, it's a dystopian future. Right, and they um, yeah, and, and they and they um, they they escape it by going and and playing games. It's one of those you know. There's a lot of these movies in the last few years. I saw a low budget one from France. That that's interesting, but this took a different twist on it. Um, and how does it hold up uh, against the book? Well, <laughs> you know how you can tell if somebody read the book, Joe. They tell you. Yeah. Um, I suggest going and seeing the movie, let's say, without somebody who read the book who can just watch the movie. And um, here's a here's a fun fact to anybody who might be listening who I know isn't, but I'll throw it out there anyways. Um, 
if if there's a book that becomes a movie and I see the movie first, I'm not fucking reading the book. You mean you haven't read all eight Harry Potter books? Or seven books, rather. Uh, no, I have not. Oh. Chances of me going back and reading them now? Zero point zero. <laughs> uh, or as my friend Steve Talley used to say, uh, the odds of that are never going to happen to one. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But seriously, it's like if I haven't seen, if I haven't read the book before and I love the movie, there's no way in hell. So shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, to you, books and movies should, they're like separate but equal. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's like, I like my books sometimes, I like my movies, I don't like, they're not the chocolate and peanut butter as I imagine them. Only be. flaw with that, when have I said I like books? <laughs> I know, well, uh, you've read of a confederacy of dunces, aren't you? Yeah, no, I'm a bit, hey. And it, it, Vonnegut, All Mr. the Vonnegut, you, right, you... and and you can't make a good, and look, I get it, if you read a book that is a thousand pages, no, I haven't read a thousand mm. pages, there's 400 pages or whatever, and it's depth, and it's this, and it's this. there's no way you can get all the subtle nuances and every character and everything in there, so shut up. Could they make a Vonnegut series? They, they, the only successful Vonnegut thing, and I want to segue too way, way off this, is he did, uh, he didn't do a, a collection of short stories, a collection of short stories mostly that appeared in the first place in Playboy, from the late 50s to the early 70s called Welcome to the Monkey House. Um, and I think it was Showtime, you know, maybe 20 years ago, took a bunch of those stories and made shorts because you can make a good – An anthology series. 10, 15-minute movie based on a five, six-page short story. That yep. that you can do. Um, but yeah, but Ready Player One, I don't know how it's doing in the box office. I know I loved it. Um, the funny thing is, you know, I saw it with the boys in management and my little guy um, – you know, he they're they're so much into those games, and they're really into games. And uh, all their characters that they like in the new games were were in there as well as uh, as well as the real old games. Because let's face it, I think it takes place in twenty forty six. So whether whether you're a character from a two thousand twelve game or a nineteen ninety game, it's pretty much the same thing to a sixteen year old. Like you know, thirty years from now, are you looking up the numbers? Yeah, worldwide, uh, Ready Player One uh, has pulled in. Four hundred eighty-five million dollars, domestic one eighteen, foreign three sixty-seven. So yeah, twenty-five um, percent of its uh, money came from the U.S. Opening weekend, it was number one, forty-one mil. And uh, I don't know what. Let's see, what's the budget on this thingy? Uh, I, don't, I can't. I can't read so good. But uh, yeah, it made money. And it used to be up until about ten years ago, it was the other way around. You made seventy-five percent. Um, domestically, 25% internationally. Now it's completely switched. Um, and I think Spielberg cracked like just his movies, just movies he's either written, directed, or produced, has cracked the $14 billion mark. And the production budget not available. Two hours and 20 minutes. Wow. Okay. But, uh, but okay. It by. It's great. Highly I'll, recommend. I'll go see that as soon as I see Black Panther. <laughs> I, I know. I, you know what? I think I'm going to wait until the Avengers open so I can watch the Avengers, then watch Ready Player One, then watch Black Panther, and then see uh, what the the original Caddyshack. <laughs> I, I, I will Caddyshack. say, and we're, we're, we're going to talk about the Avengers in a bit. Um, I did read in real time Infinity War when it was originally released in the comic series, ah. and I may or may not have the complete series. Um, Still up in the attic in the comic book boxes with the cardboard back and the plastic sleeves. I have no idea what they were, but I did. So, well, if you read the comic, then why are you going to go see the movie, man? Exactly. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, what time is it? Uh, time to bust a rhyme. It is. And while we bust a rhyme, you people. Well, I get to listen to this defunct sponsor of the week. Wednesday's Hang On Comedy Lovers meet the electrifying <laughs> Judge Harry T. Stone, a man whose court has its ups and downs. Gotcha. Where justice is a real toss-up. Heads again, it's your lucky day. Could be yours too. Coming Wednesday, January 4th. Surprise! Night Court. Eases the pain. <laughs> <laughs> Care to join me in a swig of scotch? It's 1130. Yeah, but I haven't slept in weeks. Last chance. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, something days. Damn it! <laughs> See, no, that's me. No, I, it's I, my I, fault. I said slept in days and weeks. Okay. You, you want to do it again? You want to take no. It? Right. Um, okay, so let's get into uh, everybody's favorite part of comedy personnel podcast is uh, carnival personnel, which is supposed to be comedy, sport. And I'm going to start sports by giving a huge happy birthday shout out. Uh, by the time this drops, um, it, they already had the party. Uh, my mentor in life, Paul Lagois, who runs Friday Night Hockey, who runs all of the hockey, but, you know, F&H is, is the creme de la creme of Paul's pickups. It's 90th birthday on Tuesday. Bless his soul. And he's still skating. Yeah. Like like getting out, skating, and, you know, still runs. I think he runs three. I think he's gone from five pickups to three pickups a week. I think his – it's funny that, he, you know, his son, you know, JP – who's 65 and retired, <laughs> is now running his. And I think his son is now the age I first knew Paul when I started playing, you know, pick up with him about 25 years ago. Wow. So it's a huge happy birthday shout out to Monsieur Lagois. Um, I, I got so many stories about him. Like one of my favorite things is he's he immigrated from Montreal to Southern California, I want to say 1968. Sounds like he moved there yesterday from Quebec, and he's he still has the dick accent. How do you say happy birthday in French? Who uh, cares? But six weeks later, it was six <laughs> weeks of little Susie. And <laughs> the thing is, so he used to call when, when you were on the bubble, like because it, it took a long time to become a regular. You know, you had to wait for the phone call to find out if you made the cup that week. And for even now, like 20 years later, he would call to tell you X, Y, and C. And if he got your, your voicemail, it'd be like, oh, Jacques, uh, this is Paul Legois from hockey. He's like, yeah, you, you, no, no shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, my mother. Jacques, this is your mother. <laughs> like, no, my mother-in-law does the same thing. You know, uh, this is, this is Sue. You know, it's like, yes, I got it. Call her ID. And I've known you a decade. I married your <laughs> wife. I got the voice down, lady. Um, so that so that's good. But a big shout out to to Monsieur Lagois. Um, you know um, the Bruins. As as we sit here, as this drops, they're up three to one in the first round to the um, against the, uh, the the Toronto Maple Leafs. Who, like I always say, Toronto Maple Leafs. They have the, their classic uniforms. I mean, they're an original NHL team. I love the fact that they've never effed with the logo, and they do. It's it's one it's one of the jerseys, uniforms, and sports that I love. They remind me a lot of the Titanic. They look great until they hit the ice. Thank you, thank you. Oh, no, you're too kind. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, I'd say unfortunately the Kings got swept, but they got swept by my new second favorite team, the Vegas Knights, mm. who are just honestly, I they are the first. They are the first expansion team in NHL history to sweep a playoff series. I know you like the Bruins a lot. Are you kind of secretly hoping that maybe the Knights take the cup? If the Bruins didn't, it wouldn't upset me to have an uh, to have. Uh, I mean, honestly, the way the ex- the way the expansion draft works. You know, a man explain it, <laughs> please, because I am not a man when it comes to the hockey. So, uh, when a new team comes into league. You have you have like twenty four players on your roster. The Bruins have like twenty four players. You can dress you dress eighteen players, eighteen skaters, and two goalies. You can dress twenty people, you know, for an NHL game. But you have twenty four, I think, up to twenty four, twenty five players actively on your roster at once. You know, you have people, you know, people who could play, and they call them a healthy scratch, like our good friend Mark Parker. But anyways, you so after after last season, you could only protect. Like, I think it was like 15 or 16 players. So you, each team had to have almost 10 players that could be picked up by this Vegas team. Like, they, the, so the other, the other teams around the league, the other 30 teams around the league, they could pick anybody off their roster that they didn't protect. And a couple people were big names that, okay, well, it's unlikely they're going to take this guy because his salary would be too high. And you don't want to bring in a $8 million guy and a first year team and not be able to have the other pieces around him. Um, so, so, you know, there was a lot of strategy with who you put, but basically what it means to be an expansion team with, with a, you know, with one of those drafts, if you're taking other people's cast off, you know, you're, you're, you're putting your third and fourth line or your fourth and fifth line guys to be exposed for, for most of it. Or if it's a uh, one year left on an unrestricted free agent that you're probably not going to sign the next year anyways. So 
it's a cast off team. It's almost a, like like a bad news bears type thing. Um, but like I said, their game day presentation, like you know, they're retiring the fifty eight number. There's a lot. I know the guy who's running the game up. So there's a lot of things that I liked about him. I like the story about how all the teams are going there catching the Vegas flu. Um, but you know, to sweep a team, it meant you had to win two games at Staples as well. And you know, one of the games was one to nothing. So they're doing it the old fashioned way. They're they're doing it with defense. So yeah, so that so that was pretty pretty interesting. Um, you know, by the time we speak next. By the time we speak next, there would have been the NFL draft. A um, couple interesting things, you know, on a nationwide thing. Like Cleveland has, I think Cleveland has the first pick and the fifth pick. And to bore the shit out of everybody, and I apologize to you all. Present company included. The, the, there's, there's so many shirts, Joe, if you want to go online and look. Cleveland has over the past, since the last time they made the playoffs, which is like 20 years ago, they've had the number one pick like seven or eight times. Each time has picked a quarterback <laughs> who's never lasted more than a year or two. Uh, like, like, and I, I mean, you had some can't lose guys, and somehow each and every year they find the they get the Cleveland flu. What is it? <laughs> what's the opposite of diamond in a rough? <laughs> you know, you know, a turn in a pilot of gold. Yeah, um, but they do, and so now they're like, are they going to double down? And with the first. And the fifth pick, or the first and the fourth pick, I think it might be, take two different quarterbacks. Take two, because there's there's supposed to be four or five can't-miss quarterbacks in this draft. Are they going to take two can't-miss quarterbacks? Because, like we've talked about, you because there's a salary, a rookie salary cap, You, if you were a first-round pick, if you were a top-ten pick ten years ago— your great grandkids never worked a day in their life. I mean, you could you could come out of college having never played one down in the NFL and sign an eighty million dollars, sixty million guarantee contract. Like those days are gone. So you can afford to take two first, you know, within the top five using two picks for the same position. How great is that? Two can't miss quarterbacks like in case the first one misses we right. have a backup <laughs> but but honestly if you go down the list and i won't i won't bore you but there they sell shirts in cleveland with like you know the quarterback's names all the way down and it takes up the entire jersey <laughs> and it's not big font i oh. mean they have like they have they've drafted they've made trades for other quarterbacks who were really good at this team and they come to cleveland and just it just goes to shit, man. I mean, so they are. So that's going to be interesting. But now we're only going to talk to Patriots for a second. Um, the 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 march to hating Tom Brady in five years has been greatly accelerated. Before before things didn't work out the way we wanted in February, you heard how upset I was with his Tom versus time bullshit and the whole palace drama between – Tom forcing Kraft's hand to force Jimmy Garoppolo out of town, which forces Belichick to be a dinkwad to Brady. Um, and now uh, this is the first time in his career that Tom Brady has missed the OTAs, which are optional team activities. He has never missed. In fact, people have been stunned for years. You won the Super Bowl, you're league MVP, and you're the first one in the parking lot the first day of OTAs. That he sets the tone. That the reason that the Patriots have been so successful is, yeah, you expect your head coach to put in those hours more than anybody else. You don't expect your quarterback to do that. You don't expect your four or five time, like last year, he was the first one in the parking lot the first day. And he stays on the field and works with, you know, everybody, you know. But now, honestly, he, and truly, this week, while OTAs was happening, he was in Qatar, of all places to be. <laughs> what's, the, what's the strategy here? Well, the strategy is um, he's... And luckily, because, you know, and I won't really negate the whole case, but because of everything that happened, that's probably one of the reasons Belichick said his snake oil salesman, Alex Guerrero, couldn't be on the sideline, which is also Alex Guerrero has worked with Gronk this year. Now, the proof is in the pudding. He's got Gronk to lift less less weights and do his band training and do his stretching and buy into the TB12 thing. It's the first time in five years that Gronk played all 16 regular season games and was healthy through the, throughout the Super Bowl. So what they're doing works. So when you threw Brady's guy out of the building, you threw Gronk's guy out of the building. Guess who else isn't at the OTAs? Gronk. Right. Oh. And Gronk, and we talked about this a few weeks ago. They were talking about, and this might happen by next week when we talk, and I hope it's not the case, but by next week when we talk, Gronk could be 
playing for another team because he hasn't committed to playing this year yet. He's he's floating out there that he might want to get into the WWE because he's done a lot of WWE things the last few years. He's a big name. He is a brand himself now, and and the Gronk brand. And again, you know, if he doesn't commit and he hasn't shown up, and one of the reasons the Patriots put up with this shit is he is he is a world. Renowned. I mean, he is an all-world player. He is a unanimous first ballot Hall of Famer. He owns most of the tight end records, and if he plays another season two, he will own every important tight end record in the history of football. Period. The end. Um, and, but so he gets away with a lot of shit, not only because of that. He has a very favorable team contract like if he was an unrestricted free agent somewhere else he would almost make double the money there are other people who honestly have done a fraction of what he did or has done who make a lot more money than him but he also makes up for that in endorsements he, right again well that's 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 the team argument it's like if you you know good luck go play in tampa bay play on a team that's three and thirteen don't don't go to playoffs. Let's see how well that works out for you. Yeah, you know, let let's let's ship you to Detroit. Let's ship you. Let's ship you to Cleveland. But what if he's like LeBron and you know, he, you know, he's like the LeBron James of tight ends, and he yes. he, he elevates the team and then he, uh, right. puts it in the Patriots' faces. Boom. Except the fact that the big difference is, and 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 the NBA. LeBron can single handedly beat. Yes, he can become a team leader be, and, be, be, and, and, and right, right, and score the points. But but even it doesn't matter. You go even even in basketball. In basketball, you need three bigs: the big three with the Celtics way back when. You know, uh, uh, I love it way uh, back when was like what twenty ten. You know, sh- sh- shut up! I, I I was talking the big three from the eighties. Oh, I thought you meant the, the, the more no, recent. No, no, I, I when I say the big, because I'm old and white, and and, and the players were white. <laughs> so shut when, when the big shut it. <laughs> Wait, how, they don't know that. I know I'm breaking the fourth wall, man, because it's four twenty blazing. <laughs> Some two guys who've never smoked. Hey, and it's Hitler's birthday, and so we um, we we go. Uh, Thanks for crowbarring that fact <laughs> in for the fifth time. <laughs> Do I get a C, Kyle? When I say C, you say hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a lot of fine people out there who read Mein Kampf. Both sides. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, but but uh, like Michael Jordan, he he. His record for scoring 50 points and a loss is second to none. No, I'm, I'm dead serious. No, I'm laughing at the C. Kyle thing. <laughs> what have I done? Ugh. I think that's going to become a new thing. I think I might edit that out. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. Oh, shot it. So, anyways, getting back to football. <laughs> wait, so, that's, that's the interesting thing. It's like, yeah, you, you mean you can be the greatest – if Tom Brady goes anywhere else and he never had a Wes Welker, he doesn't have, you know, the, the people around him, um, then you can't do it. And again, the first three Super Bowls that they won, I mean, they won the AFC title game in 2004. And I only bring this up because Ty Law was at our uh, the Mass Pirates game last week. And it was I, I made it one of the trivia questions when you ask people in the stands. Huh. Who, in 2004 AFC title game, he picked off. Peyton Manning three times. One of them was a pick six. Patriots won that game 24 to 14. Mm-hmm. You take away those three picks, they don't win that game. So I'm not taking anything away from Brady, the early Brady, but you need peace around you. Gronk, if he doesn't have Tom Brady throwing to him, if he doesn't have, you know, a Wes Welker or, 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 or you know, he wasn't really there with Wes, but, but Edelman or Amendola taking the short stuff and taking coverage away and, and, well, well, this year he won't have Amendola taking the. No, but it, well, he has Jules coming yeah. back. But well, that's the thing. Oh, it's like there's so many times when people are like, "How can you put single coverage on Gronk?" It's like because you have two other good right receivers, or you got a good right. anyway. And you have Tom Brady, and right. you have Tom Brady. But right now, both Brady, they're not officially holding out, and the rumor is is Gronk is Gronk angling to get more money because. And I'll say it, I love Gronk, but to be honest, right now, if he wants more money, or if he wants more money. And with his health problems, I would have no problem if somebody gave us a number one pick saying bye to Gronk. Because honestly, he between all the injuries he's had, he's now 30. He's he's always been one hit away. Granted, he did. Last year, he played all 16 games. He played all three playoff games. And it's great. 
But if his heart's not in it, and at the same time, if he wants more money, if it's like, okay, well, now we can't have, you know, a, a good corner, or if we have to cut something to make more room for Gronk, you know, as the as a player gets older and has had more injuries, I don't think you pay them more. And but somebody out there, somebody out there will give you a top twenty pick for him. And then, so the Patriots have two picks in the first draft, which they haven't in a long time. And there's rumors that they could do a Cleveland thing: use two picks in the first draft, first round, to pick two different quarterbacks. Because this is Brady's last year or second to last year. Is carry three quarterbacks, have these two guys, and have these two guys fight it out to be the heir apparent for the next two years. I've bored Joe, which means I've bored Flora, which means I've bored Biff, which means I've bored Richard, <laughs> which means I've bored everybody but me. I'm sorry. I said I wasn't going to talk that much about the Patriots, but that wraps up uh, sport. And now, Good night. now, Joe, savor this moment. This is the last time that Joe gets to pick out the game for the random video game review of the week because my cast comes off on Monday and my fat ass will be able to go and do what I love best. Pick a video game off your shelf. With that said, Joe will saunter, sashay. Oh, I was going to say, I'm not sauntering, sir. I'm sashaying. <laughs> his way over to his walls. Walls. That's right. Plural with an S of video games. I'm not turning around. I'm not even going to see. Why am I turning around? It doesn't matter. It's you who can't see it. But go ahead, Joe. Explain to the folks what's happening. I'm going to wave my magic hand over my magic wall of magic video games and make a pressure luck sound. And when I hear the word stop from Jacques, I'm going to pull a game off the shelf that I'm not going to look at, and I'm going to try to guess what game I pulled off based on the gap in the wall. Hit it! All right, all right. Big money, big money. No whammies, big money, no whammies. And stop! Oh, I'm low. I'm low. How low can you go? Uh, yeah, don't don't uh, hold it up. Oh, God. I don't even know if I pulled it off. I think I pulled it off my my Xbox 360 shelf. You did pull it off. Uh, and don't tell me not a word, not a word. Uh, you've come from a great distance. <laughs> You're here to sell me subscriptions. Uh, no, I'm going to guess that I pulled a game off of my 360 shelf, and I think it's right next to G Ghostbusters. And... G and it's not Halo Three. Ah, oh, what is it? Is it? Oh man, um, it's, it's somewhere in the G's. G's, ah, uh, G's. I, uh, I, uh, I hate myself. I give up. What is it? Oh, Halo. <laughs> <laughs> You're like it's not Halo Three. Yeah, I know. Well, you know what it was is that Halo One and Two originally came out for the original Xbox, but I forgot that they remastered it for the Xbox 360. They remastered Halo uh, as Halo Anniversary. Um, it's a. This is you know the game of games for this generation and the previous generation um, was Microsoft exclusive Xbox exclusive. This put. Microsoft, I think, on the map as far as a gaming console manufacturer, because you, if you don't remember, Xbox was the uh, first foray into the uh, console, um, the, cons the, the video game console manufacturing for Microsoft. They uh, previously uh, worked with Sega, actually, to produce the Dreamcast. And Sega! Exactly. In the late 90s. The, uh, the, so the Sega Dreamcast actually has written on it, powered by Microsoft Windows CE, which was like a dumbed-down version of their XP Windows uh, operating system. But basically, it gave Microsoft a taste of what it's like to work in the video game industry. This, yeah, I think we could do this. They came out with the Xbox, and with the Xbox, they released Halo. It's like a first per it's not like a first-person shooter game. It is a first-person shooter game. Um, you play as Master Chief, I think. I think you're right. And I say I think because although I own many iterations of Halo and Halo Don't 2. It. Don't say it. I played Halo Don't 2 before it. I played Halo 1. Um, I haven't played. I played a little bit of the original Halo for the Xbox um, recently, like within the last couple of years. 
Uh, I wasn't an Xbox owner when it actually when when the Xbox and GameCube and all that you know late '90s early 2000s, uh, I was just starting a family. I um, wasn't into video games as much as I used to be. I wasn't like a hardcore gamer. Like I kind of fell out of gaming once the 3D stuff kicked in. You know. So you because at this point in your life you were seeing a woman naked. Yes. <laughs> Right. Without paying for it. Yeah, that was... Well, the, you were paid for it, but without paying for, and without it being on a screen. Instead of the lump sum, <laughs> I took the payment plan. <laughs> like the fool that I am. No, but uh, getting back to Halo Anniversary, it's a remastered version for the 360, which is now a generation older than what we have now, the Xbox One, of which I do not own. But it's... I mean, if you haven't played Halo and you're into video games, what? Um which I say to myself because I haven't played much of Halo and I'm into video games. But it's great. It's like, uh, you know, it, it holds up and it's the remastered version, I'm sure, is much better, higher definition graphics. And I'm sure once once the arthritis starts to kick in, that's when I'll say, you know what, let me give Halo a try and then I won't be able to play it and I'll see. But Master Chief is one of those characters where if you've never played a game, you know the outfit, you know the character, you've seen him in other pop culture things. Yeah, exactly. So, Like Ready Player One. <laughs> right. He's probably made a cameo, on, and I'll be pleasantly surprised when I see him. Or maybe I won't recognize him because I haven't played Halo enough, which maybe I should start playing. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you ride around in, uh, uh, on the back cover. I'm reading you ride around in a, in a vehicle. Um, you play co-op over Xbox Live. You know, that's, I mean, that's that was the big draw with Halo. I mean, they had the great single-player campaign, but it also had multiplayer um, it's Halo. I mean, what the fuck? And I think they've up to Halo Four now, and I, I think they, I don't. I, I think they're done with Halo. No, maybe they're working on Halo Five, but um, I don't know. It's great. Um, you know, yay Halo. <laughs> um, no, I've never played it. You know, because I was never into these kind of video games. And then by the time I got into it, I, I don't think I don't know if it's even available on the playstation platform no it's a exclusively microsoft xbox Still, okay it, yeah it will always it's like mario it's like you are not going to play mario on a on a on a, on a, a playstation so uh you watch this anything? isn't ready player one man well this isn't the uh, the oasis where everything's mixed into one everything <laughs> yeah well maybe in the future when apple owns all the stuff and disney owns all this stuff they're well, getting there yeah i know slowly but surely what were you saying uh Oh, no, I almost moved on from this. If if you didn't own this, oh, gee. what do you think you would be shelling out for this? Oh, this? Yeah. Um, I think I picked this up at a Goodwill for like four bucks. Then you got to steal, my friend. Yeah, oh, then eight ninety four. So wow. I'm going. I'm going to, even though I didn't review it. I'm handing my phone to Joe. Mm -hmm. He's handing me because last week oh, I posted you. Oh, what a, what a great shot too! You're gonna you're gonna get my entire sad cave. Look at this. Hold on a second. Look at this place. All right. So uh, so last week I had oh. Joe hold up the random video game game of the week. And he's like, because over, as Joe's looking at me, and he's not looking at me. He set up the table so he could look past me. There was walls of video <laughs> games and paraphernalia and collectibles. I'm looking at his bulkhead door. <laughs> With a with a and I'm happy because it's it's a it's the replica Bobby Orr retired number. It's the thermostat, like the about the size almost the size of a baby's head thermostat. So you know when hyperthermia will be setting in. <laughs> I li I like the rustic wall. It reminds me of like, hey, maybe we're like the Beatles in the Cavern Club of Germany in 1958, or we're like the woman in the bottom of the well in S Silence of the Lambs, where it puts, it puts the lotion, lotion on in the basket. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but and also, you know, and I I really think you know the creme de la creme is the uh, Roger Goodell clown face. T terrible towel that was handed out at Gillette Stadium uh, week one last season by Barstool Sports. Barstool Sports. Yeah. So, so when I posted the picture of him, like poking his you know head over the microphone, he's like, "Oh, that looks awful." I'm in it, and all you see is the rock wall behind me. So this week, even though I didn't do the review, I will post like this game with. Um, well, you have a much better view, by the way. You have a nice backdrop. I mean. I kind of taken this for granted because I've never actually stared at this side of the wall. But this is, yeah, this is the the lonely wall. But they, um, 
It, it, it's great. Like, I just looked at the picture. In the backdrop, it looks great. If you had a mini fridge. <laughs> <laughs> that would really cap the place. So Joe and I have not done a side show in a while, and I, I'll say it. You're welcome. Because <laughs> we, we, when we started doing the sideshows at Post on Thursday, we really wanted them to – they actually just start out because Adam West passing. and We didn't want to, you know, let that go without kind of, you know, doing a whole show about that. But at the time, I think, you know, the election was too raw and I think I was, I was too much angry to not want to just vent about that. And it was football season. So Joe said, hey, we'll do a mini – show in the middle of the week he called it a side show because he's smart no he called it the side show he called uh, he, did i yeah i think you called it side show yeah you, you yeah i'm a credit where See, credit is due i'm smart enough to think of it you're not smart enough to take credit <laughs> i forgot that i thought of it not smart <laughs> anyway no. but you but keep saying i'm smart we, we have because because it's, it's it, it, you know it's some contest i have glasses know? well you do too you know mm. right exactly so we um so we we uh we we put sideshows on hold unless you know we were going to have a special one or unless we could like really plot it out or something like that. And so this week we are going to do one because on Monday to get the eight eight day weekend box office number, uh, Marvel launches Infinity War. Yep. So uh, strap in for I think it will call it the Avengers. Sideshow, uh, or I don't know. Maybe we'll call it the Marvel DCU. I mean, the Marvel DCU. Shut up, dickhead. Mar the 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 Marvel um, expanded universe MCU. Right, right. So, yeah, or we'll just call it the Infinity War Sideshow. So, uh, my my friend AJ keeps keeps calling us. So, Joe, say hi to AJ. Hey, man, what's up? I didn't want you to keep going to voicemail, so I will call you AJ when we're done with our sideshow. We're about to talk about Infinity War. Say hi to the people. Well, first, sign this release saying that you, we allow <laughs> your voice and likeness to be broadcast at infinitum. So I will call you in just a bit. I didn't want you to think I was blowing you off like some other people. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> That's the guy, AJ, who I work with with the Pirates, and he kept calling. So something's going on. Oh, man. But I wanted to Did make Did they sure. win a game? No, no. They're, they, well, that's right. They're undefeated. They're undefeated. They're 2-0. and oh. They got a game. T so today's Friday because I'm so mixed up. So so they have a game tomorrow, which I would tell you you could watch on YouTube on Saturday night, but where you're hearing this on Monday Missed morning. Missed it. <laughs> Well, next Saturday night, make sure to watch that game. That game, exactly. So, um, so we, we will do a sideshow on that. I don't have a Netflix or Redbox or HBO or anything picked because all week long I just keep watching the Marvel movies, getting ready for this. That's a good enough uh, of a recommendation as any. Last week, uh, last night, I watched Ragnarok, which again, I like. Management loved the movie when it came out. And she loves it even more, having seen it. I stand by my thing. It's a great movie. It's a fun movie. It's the funniest Thor movie. But it is. It's it's more of a Guardians movie than a Thor movie. But I'm it, it, not in a bad way. You no, know, I just was originally expecting, you know, to see a spoiler alert. He loses his eye. He loses a hammer. He loses Asgard. And it's a comedy. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean, it's like, uh, but but I did as I'm going through this, and it's like it's true. I realized, okay, there's no I in Thor, <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. Uh, but it is. It's a good movie. It has some really like mo. I mean, it's a typical Marvel movie. You're laughing hysterically as you have tears rolling down the side of your face, uh -huh. or you have tears rolling down the side of your face, and then something that makes you laugh hysterically. But Going down the list, like I did, I just I just list some of the things that Thor lost in his last movie. Of course, he lost his hair. Um, so he loses all these things. But then you realize, oh, in Civil War, Captain America loses his shield. You know, and then, you know, Tony basically lost I mean, it's a good thing he had a medical procedure to take the metal shrapnel that was out of his heart so he doesn't need to wear that chest plate anymore. But he lost his house in the last like like the bad guy, you know, um, mm -hmm. oh, my God, the Ten Rings. Why am I blanking on his mm -hmm. nemesis name? But anyways, blows up oh. his his Malibu house, like blows it up. It like oh, the entire house falls into the oh, Pacific yeah. Ocean. Yeah. And you go down the list of like all the things that everybody associated with the Avengers has lost in the past. Hawkeye like, lost his um, 
you know, uh, testicles. Yeah. Wasn't like he had oh, a, he has Barrett with two kids. Yeah, that's so. what I was saying. <laughs> he kind of had a oh, oh shit. Um, but yeah, so so it, it's it's interesting. So I guess that's the running theme. But so we are going to do a countdown to the Avengers uh, Infinity War that comes out today. Monday, if you're listening with the day this drops, it will it will be out. Are you double checking to make sure I'm not just uh, talking up my ass? Oh, does it wait? Does it it, it drop March uh, April twenty third? Really? Is it twenty third? Hold on a second. Time out here. Uh, listen to this music while I look up. Um. So yeah. So that that is my, that is my random video game. Oh yeah, it is Monday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Oh wait, was I right? Yes. Okay. Well, you know, it's not important that I was right. Broken clock. It's you were wrong. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not whether you win or lose, Joe. It's whether I win or lose. Yes. So, do you have a review? Uh, do I have a, like a recommendation for Netflix? Um, I mean, what did you watch this week? Not. Oh, gee, what did I watch? Not a uh, Blue not, Bloods. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to steal your thunder. Uh, I, I think I just kind of bounced around from uh, town to town, <laughs> up and down the dial. Maybe, maybe you and you me, me were never meant to be. Yeah, but just maybe think of me once in a while. What will you be? I'll be at WKRP in that? Cincinnati. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Joel McHale show? I don't know. Uh, hey, was it, was it good this week? I don't know. I didn't watch it this I week. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> and now, and, and I, I know the question is no. Do you have a parenting tip of the week? No. Okay. Mine is the new game that I think your, your child, he learned it from watching your son, uh, Fortnite. Nope. And, oh, they didn't get up uh, Fortnite. I don't know if they play Fortnite. If I, I, I don't know, Louie. They're really good kids. You should talk to them now. And then. Eh, whatever. Uh, but th- but there was um, there was like a battle royale, like just for this week only. I think that honestly, that Blizzard. I don't know if it's Blizzard. Whoever the company is, did like uh, oh, almost like. And again, it's like the violence is very much um, uh, cartoonish. Yeah, very very cartoonish. Very. What, what's what's Epic Games for developers, by the way, um, and and so it's fine. It's over the top, and and they they get to you know, it, you, you you fly over an island and everybody jumps off. It's a school bus that flies over this island that everybody's coming onto the game like from around the world, you know, plays, and they jump out the back of it and you parachute in. But the ba- the, the flying bus is being like. Powered by a gigantic hot air balloon, so <laughs> it's it's comic, it's funny. Yeah, and then you run around the island collecting weapons and collecting supplies. I've watched them play for hours over like the last few days. Like you know they're on break and I'm just sitting there in the living room with getting some work done. And and the games last five or ten minutes, and they spend their whole time running around trying to collect these things for a big battle. And times out. But times out. You know, yeah. Um, or they get they get killed before they really get started. Sometimes they're last for like 30, 45 seconds. It's kind of like a Hunger Game thing. It's like everybody lands and you might land next to a really good gun and I land next to a bazooka. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's a like, game over and then they get so upset and frustrated. Um, but my parenting tip of the week is, again, I've used this before, you know, let them really find something that they like because the whole week, this whole week has been smooth. Guys, after this level, 15 minutes piano, I don't want to, or, or no, no, two more levels after this. And then I always have one of the controllers so I can just power down the PS4 right there. Find something that they love that you can take away from them because it's the only thing that's made being stuck at home with a broken foot during April vacation bearable. That and Blue Bloods. <laughs> Come on, you have watched Blue Bloods a little bit. I, s- Keep that Blue Bloods train rolling. I, I, so... I was I was you know at, at my mom's house for a couple of days because my my nieces and nephews were there and the boys wanted to go over and I can get more work done there, and I was so disappointed because I on uh, like one day it's all leverage the show leverage and I'm not getting into any other shows and then finally it's like oh here's my blue bloods and I just hit record for the whole day <laughs> here's my blue bloods and whole the whole day and like the second episode was. Season one, episode one. I'm like, no, I don't oh. want to go back. And and I saw, I tried to watch the pilot. I'm like, how did they make an episode number two? <laughs> because episode number one was so bad. Wow. Well, you know, the power of Selleck. That so, right. mustache can heal wounds. And and, and, and so, so blue blood. I can't believe I'm talking about this. I hate you. <laughs> so the pilot episode, <laughs> it starts by one of his youngest sons, you know, 
graduating the police academy and the ceremony is at Madison Square Garden. They truly had thousands of extras to shoot the opening couple scenes of the series of Blue Bloods. I mean, honestly, they probably have to have spent more on the opening two scenes of Blue Bloods than what the budget is for 90% of shows out there. Uh-huh. Man. You know, so you know, how many old people buying depends can there be to support that? You'd be surprised, my friend. You'd be surprised. So, um, so I apologize for this episode, and I apologize in advance for the Marvel Infinity War countdown sideshow dropping on Thursday. I just want to know, I'm excited to know who the co-host is going to be of that sideshow, because <laughs> if you remember the last time you talked about superhero stuff, it was with another person, and I had laundry to do. Um, I don't know if we have that luxury this week. You've seen a lot of the movies. I have. I, I, I'm more into the Marvel movies than I ever am into the uh, DC TV shows. So I will be so, wait, semi... You've seen, you've seen Iron Man. Oh, yeah. I've seen you've all seen the... You've seen Thor. Iron... I've seen what the first one. You've seen Captain America. Yeah, I think so. So it's just the black one you haven't seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now he's stuck in the corner because I painted him in there. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bad person. You are. All right. When well... I say sing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Well, thank you all for listening to this um, Carnival Personnel Podcast. Uh, countdown to the final personnel Carnival Personnel <laughs> Podcast will be starting shortly. As you know, our um, our uh, Podbean account expires. Our Podbean account expires on um, on uh, what you might call it uh, Memorial Day. I think this year. So I don't know. Yeah. So May is going to be quite the month of, of <laughs> self-reflection for me. Like, do I want to throw in another $80 for another year of you this shit? you want to spend three hours a week locked in a basement without a mini fridge with me? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yes, I think I might. But I don't know. I want to keep, I want, like, like Tom Brady, I want to keep my options open. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not committed yet. Hold your applause. Um... So that, and lastly, do not forget.